I'm a heavy user of OpenAI. If you ask me, I can't live a day without accessing databases. So I'm a certified scuba diver and over the weekends, I, I have a Harley Davidson that I drive around the town. I, I do make my days count when I'm not working. AI is a good thing that's happening, right? Like, you know, so we shouldn't fear AI. The entire architecture of databases changed significantly. What cloud brought was commodity hardware, the way to look at storage systems very differently. And every of these services are actually a billion dollar services right now, right? Or being able to query the data that you put in, being able to get it at a super fast rate, being able to service your customer. And that customer now has a mobile phone, which was not there before. But we are also pushing the envelope in terms of AI being self catering right? Hello and welcome everyone to the next episode of the AIM Media House podcast, Simulated Reality. Today we have with us the SVP of Engineering at Couchbase, Gopi Duddi. Hi Gopi, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thanks for inviting me, Kashyap. No, thank you for joining in. It's a fantastic opportunity for me to learn uh, more about you, your experience and Couchbase as well. Okay, fantastic. Let's start. My first question to you, Gopi, is, you know, with you have your 20, 25 years of experience in the cloud database uh, development, right? Can you tell us, you know, can you tell our audience a little bit about your journey and how has it shaped to your perception of the current market competition in the database services? especially uh, in the wake of Gen AI, <laughs> and we have to touch upon that subject. And how is Couchbase positioning itself to stay ahead in the, in the, in the entire competitive landscape? Right. A lot to unpack, like, you know, it's a, it's a let me summarize my, my journey uh, in the database world, like, you know, so I studied in India, so I did my engineering there. Um, so uh, as an engineer, you have two routes that you can take, right? Like you know, either you can do, go down this path of systems programming or be an application programmer. Back in the good old days, systems programming used to be that stuff that uh, engineers wanted to do, right? Like you know, either you are building systems with assembly line or like in a network. It was all like you know one big blob which considered system programming, either it's network, assembly, databases, operating systems, or you're on the application side of things where you have the domain knowledge. Generally, engineers gravitated towards that. And that's where my calling was. Like, you know, I, I started my career as a systems programmer doing low level stuff. Um, then when I thought my, I needed to make sure that like, you know, I had needed to broaden uh, either I could have gone into operating system level stuff or on being to the database side of things. So I found databases to be fascinating because it brought in a lot of system concepts together. Storage, query processing, network, um, and a little bit of sprinkling on the application side of things in terms of queries and like you know, how your users are interacting. So it's a fascinating piece of software at that time when I thought. So that's how, so I started my career with Informix, which was long, I mean, it's no longer there, but it got absorbed by IBM. So I, I went into IBM from that standpoint, but I started my career uh, in Informix, working on their core server. Then long below in the, uh, it got acquired by IBM. Then I grabbed, moved to IBM, worked on DB2, I was leading that DB2 effort, I made mean, their permanent databases on the LUW side. And databases was considered this this the only the geek geek part of people doing it. But what happened was this evolution of cloud actually brought a new life to databases. Like you know, databases used to be this. You had a couple of vendors who really did it, like you know, IBM or Informix, IBM and Oracle, like you know, SQL Server. That's uh, and primarily it was uh, literally a two horse race, right? Uh, IBM and Oracle with workstation, or low, smaller scale databases to be on the SQL server side. Like you know, this is how it was. But what happened was with the cloud, the entire architecture of databases changed significantly. Um, I'm setting the story up so that we can lead to AI and how that's going to change and how we are seeing that evolve. So like, you know, so what happened was it, when you need to buy a database, you go to those vendors and they'll vertically scale your application. So you need more load, you need to buy a, a newer rack. So that's how it was, and that's and pretty much everything that you used on the web or an app was backed by a database at the back, right? So that's how 
those you don't see it, but there is a database for every action that a customer is performing. That is a database transaction that is performing in the back. Um, long below, the cloud comes in and it changes the game, right? Like, and, and um, and that's when I moved to um, AWS. And uh, AWS mean like now I was building these systems on prem, and I was doing the same things like you know, vertically sailing workloads. What cloud brought was commodity hardware, the way to look at storage systems very differently, the way to look at distributed computing very differently at a cloud scale. And uh, I was fortunate to work in um, the the products like Redshift. I started my career in AWS with Redshift and then like you know, Aurora and like you know Glue and that's my my uh, and cloud was not AWS was not a big big name at that time and I joined like you know it was like you know, but my interest in databases what led me to to seek and build newer systems and innovate like you know, innovations were happening at that space and I was always following that innovation chain to make sure that like you know, I was there. So long below, like you know, these are like you know, uh, super hit services out there. Like Redshift is doing really well. Aurora is doing even better. Like you know, in terms of what it is, and every of these services are actually a billion dollar services right now. Right? Um, no, it's interesting to learn your journey. Uh, you know, uh, into Couchbase. What what makes Couchbase exciting for you? It says that you know they are able to develop adaptive applications. What does that exactly mean, and how 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 is it kind of uh, competing against uh, some of the customers? And what does that exactly mean? So bringing Couchbase into the equation. So why why Couchbase, right? So if you look at traditional, I've been in this industry for a, for a long time. Like you know, one of the fortunate ones to have been in the same career line. For a long time, and the care that generally we outdate our, our things, right? You are a network, network has changed so significantly. We went to some other stuff and we are doing something else totally different and, and in our space. What has happened in the in, in the database world is um the way we look at databases, generally we look at a database as uh, rows, right? Like you know, TPOs which are there, right? Like you know, that's how there is a relational algebra, there is a, if you go back to your uh, engineering routes that there is a uh, card and normalization like first normal form second normal form so that's how the whole databases have been designed it's been uh, it served us so well for historical reasons and the way the applications were built applications are getting built faster and the fact that what developers have realized is that the biggest impedance in building an application is is actually the database Think about it, right? Like you know, if you're putting together an order management system, a customer has orders, orders has items, items has products, right? Like, you know, it's very typical. If I go to a database, even before I could write a line of code, I need to get a schema, right? A customer uh, table, then like, you know, a customer has an order table, then it has a foreign team relationship, orders has. And you're looking at it as not just as a, as a prototype, but you're looking at it as a scale. And what if I come and tell you customer information has changed, right? Like and as you're building this and saying that customer now has a mobile phone, which was not there before, or well, now it has a WhatsApp ID or something like that, right? Like, you know, so what happens is the schema keeps changing because as we are moving through this chain, actually databases become the inherence for building applications at a, at a much faster rate. So this is what we call as an adaptive thing is that what we consider our strength is going to be about the fact that you as a customer should be able to build your app or adapt to the changing needs of your own customers that you're serving in a way that doesn't require a database shut down, reformat, changes and all that stuff. And your customers, you as a customer is only, the only thing that you're interested in is that being able to query the data that you put in, being able to get it at a super fast rate being able to service your customer. Everything else is details that you shouldn't be worrying about. And it should be able to adapt and you should be able to layer in features and functionality. Like databases are not just databases anymore. Right? You need to be able to provide full text search capabilities. You need to be able to provide graphing capabilities. You need to be able to provide vector capabilities. So all those things, you don't need a database 
uh, expert or a DBA, and that those those jobs are actually gone, right? Like in the day DBAs and all that stuff. You don't go into this traditional model, but an application programmer should be able to deal with a database as as an entity, and it should be able to adapt to all the changing needs that a, a developer might have as a backend system, and being able to adapt and being able to do that. So it's just this this flexible schema and not requiring schema additions to be able to make a line of change. So it's it's the game is all about how fast can you build an app, how sophisticated your apps become, and does does it that the scale of the database change because of that? Like you know, so those constructs are the ones that we call as adaptive. Correct, and uh, you know, given that you must be interacting with all of these customers on a very regular basis, and I'm sure the entire adaptive uh, nature of Couchbase is built on. Uh, continuous research and speaking with your clients and understanding their problem statements, right? Uh, what are some of the current problem statements in generative, uh, especially in the with the advent of generative AI that these people are facing when it comes to cloud databases? And how are you at uh, Couchbase trying to solve them? How are you trying to uh, decipher exactly what is the root cause of some of these problems and then identify solutions and build them uh, so that it, it differentiates you in the market? Yeah, great question, right? And uh, as I said, right, one area which has been evolving is databases, like, and it's been catching up with time. Yeah. And with AI, that is even, it, it makes it even more pertinent that we have an adaptive aspect of the application. So AI is that adaptive aspect, right? Now, if you look at it, um, uh, databases used to store structured information, right? So it's a blob, like you know, a text, your phone number, your some salary information, some construct, and basically that's the storage mechanism. But what has happened is with that, with the advent of AI, that these databases need to be able to also augment the natural language supports that are bringing it. So we are, we are looking at database. Previously, you used to interact with database using uh, a structured query language, and that's the language that most often used, right? Now, what has happened is the number of users of databases have increased. You might probably be a user, you may not even know that you're hitting a database, but you're using it in a natural language form in terms of being able to interact with, hey, as I told previous examples that we talked about, think about your users who are trying to query a database using a natural language. Hey, I placed an order yesterday, but I don't know where the order is. It actually translates into a SQL query at some point, right? Like you know, to be able to do that. Yeah. So being able to interact with that kind of a thing means that a database need to be able to support that. So we just launched something called IQ, which actually, uh, it's a coding assistant in terms of being able to translate and being able to do that. The second aspect of it is as, as a as a builder of an app, like we, we service the developers. Developers are our first, first order community that we service a lot. The developers are building an app and they are not necessarily the experts in databases in a distributed system. Right? Generally, like in a, in a distributed system, there are many nodes that are connected, commodity hardware, anything can go wrong, anything being there. We are not requiring them to be experts, but we are also pushing the, the envelope in terms of AI being self healing right? You uh, built a system with eight indexes and your query uses two indexes. You're wasting your time, resources, and money in terms of having five more indexes that are there. A query advisor needs to be able to do that. So that part of it, how do you optimize? There are few nodes that are that can be shut down based on your usage pattern that can be shut down like an auto-scaled backup, like you know, being able to do that. What is the instance type that are best suited for your stuff? Yeah. Do in this in, like yeah, in the same question, if you can also cover the entire database as a service and Couchbase Capella as well, you know, I think because it's it's kind of oh, I similar questions. So I just thought that. Yeah. That. So, so uh, what what has happened? At least, like you know, um, I think this is one of the powers of Couchbase is the fact that databases generally used to be something that you own and keep in your in your data centers because you used to be like you know that's where you're getting the scale. You get their licenses from Oracle or D2 and have it in your data center. But what has happened with the advent of cloud and this cloud databases are bigger. So 
Couchbase is available in all three clouds, right? Like it is available in AWS, Google, as well as uh, Microsoft, as you right? So we are there in all clouds. So when you are coming to this thing, and this is what we call as a database as a service, where you are not, the beauty of cloud databases is the fact that you're coming in, you're not procuring hardware, you're not worried about what nodes that this thing is there like you know so all you are trying to do is define your problem what is the throughput that you require and provision a thing within seconds the database is ready for you to go right you can start building an app and when you're done with it you can shut it down so where we are going with this is also the fact that like so but you what couchbase provides us we provide you with that setup for cloud as well as the same setup that for on-prem or you can take our software and put it in your own cloud things. Like, like for example, if you're a, uh, there is a customer who's running it, running us on uh, Alibaba Cloud. We don't, we don't have our software ourselves in Alibaba, but they've taken our software provision using Docker images or like in you know, a virtualization and put it on the cloud. So we offer every everything that you can, whatever is the deployment model that best suits your need, you'll be able to access it. And our own software that we provide, we call it Kepala, which is the DBAS offering that we offer. So where management responsibility of the software is with us, you're paying for usage. It's a usage-based pricing that is there and you use and everything that you get the best of the software, but without the management overhead that goes along with managing these distributed systems and, and a large scale that makes a lot more sense. But if you are, and we also offer an open source version of the same thing. Like, you know, it's a, it's a, we call it CE, like in a community edition that you can download on your MacBook or laptop and start working on it just to kick tires. But you can use the same thing on the cloud as well. And how does this Capella address some of the uh, modern problem statements that we face? Capella uh, has everything that I talked about. Capella has IQ. IQ is our AI coding assistant. So you can come with everything what I'm talking about. One thing that we have, we, we as a company are very uh, uh, maniacal about is the fact that we make sure that the version on the cloud is exactly the same version that is getting shipped to our customers. So we have parity, which we call it SIM shipping. So in the sense that we have the same version, the best version of the cloud is the same version that you get in on-prem versions as well. So Kepala has like, you know, we, we just, we have vector capabilities. We have all multi-model capabilities in Kepala. We have AI capabilities in Kepala, as well as you can take it in on-prem. So for us, you define the, dif dif the environment. model, yeah. you the software, but you get it both in the cloud on-prem or you take your own cloud and put it as well. Like, you know. Definitely. Fantastic. Looking ahead, what are some of your uh, key innovation strategies? Uh, you know, uh, I, the space is con continuously evolving, you know, uh, today it's Gen AI, last year it was uh, ML Ops, the year before that it was data engineering. The space of entirely data-driven technologies is consistently, you know, uh, one thing it has not changed is the evolution. And uh, with the fast base, uh, fast-paced evolution, uh, what do you envision uh, some of the factors that will impact, uh, you know, the uh, cloud database industry and what, what what are you anticipating some of the changes and how do you plan to kind of build on it? Yeah, so um, change is a constant, at least when it comes to database part of the world. and. Um, I mean, it's not me saying it, but I, I personally think AI is going to revolutionize everything that we do, right? And for AI to revolutionize everything that you do, every app needs to change, right? Every app has to have this AI intelligence and probably just like how we went from client server to cloud, right? Everything became cloud. Like, you know, you now talk about an app, you, you assume that it's in the cloud. You don't assume that it's in the client server model. The same way, the next revolution is AI. And I, I honestly feel that that is going to change every single app. So what does AI bring to the table, right? It brings in that, that aspect of intelligence for the app. So for the intelligence for the app, it requires, at a broad sense, for any intelligence to happen, the reason you and me can talk 
is because of the fact that we have data at the back, right? I mean, like now somewhere in our heads, some in our brain that the data is stored and we are able to access that data and being able to do that. And that's what databases are really good at, right? You have um, like, you know, hundreds and thousands of been people have been working for many, many years to make sure that like, you know, these, these access is in a, in a way in form that is going to happen. So, so you can almost think about AI just like how cloud became cloud because of the fact that how databases changed the cloud game. AI is going to become AI because of the fact that how databases are changing. In the sense that how the performance characteristic, how quickly can you get to the data and how large volumes of data you can you can aggregate and get results out of it, which is basically the analytics offering that we also have. And the fact that how easy we make an app developer's life to be able to get uh, uh, get access to intelligence. For example, let's let's assume that you you are applying for a loan, right? Mm. Previous systems used to be that you have a score that how likely you are going to pay back the loan, right? That means that there is a, there is a system there is there is a model that's been built that needs to be able to access in real time when a loan decisions are being made, because if you're waiting and a circle is running you're going to shut down and go to the next bank to be able to do that, right? So all those systems, while there is intelligence that the databases world is changing to make sure that it becomes adaptive enough to be able to incorporate all that. Yeah, you can bring in 10 different systems together and try to put it versus you go to a database and that's what database systems are good at, like in the sense that they're able to bring in network, storage, query, and now AI, all into the same thing rather than having bespoke systems working yeah. to make sure a platform is provided right so it's it's interesting to see how ai is making databases more intelligent that will in effect lead everyone to build better ai <laughs> yeah, exactly so it's, a, it's the same thing happened if you look back the same thing happened with cloud yeah cloud was just a layer like you, know, you can search and nobody thought cloud is going to but actually databases evolved to make cloud better, but the cloud became the one that was driving. So it becomes a recursive cycle in terms of what it is um, doing. Awesome. Uh, great conversation, uh, Gopi. I'm going to do a fun rapid fire round with you <laughs> uh, after uh, you know uh, talking something really serious. What's your favorite developer tool or software uh, and specifically in the generative AI uh, space and why? So. I like uh, the, the tool that I use is VS Code for most of my development aspect. Like, you know, we, I use uh, JetBrains as well, like, you know, in terms of what it is. But from a from an AI standpoint, uh, I'm a heavy user of OpenAI in terms of what it is. Our, our product is connected with OpenAI as well, like, you know, so. But if you ask me, I can't live a day without accessing databases. So. I have access to most of the database is my passion in terms of what it is. So we use Couchbase in various shapes and forms in terms of what it is. So. Um, when you're not leading teams and driving technology forward, uh, what's your go-to activity to unwind and have fun? I'm a certified scuba diver. So huh? I, so I, um, and I'm, I'm learning flying as well. So I do have very adventurous activities, very, which is considered very risky. I do like to not be on the ground and uh, and over the weekends I, I have a Harley Davidson that I drive around the town so uh, so it's just kind of uh, so I do have uh, I, I do make my days count when I'm not working. That sounds fun. <laughs> what is that one piece of advice uh, that you want to give to the future techies of the world? Yeah I think um, AI is a good thing that's happening, right? Like, you know, so we shouldn't fear AI from a perspective of uh, it's easy to have a doomsday scenario in terms of like, you know, everything that happened, like, you know, when we said cloud is going to come in, we said that all retail stores are going to disappear. You see more retail stores are there than this thing. So, yeah, it's a good thing. And I feel like, you know, it, it's, it's a part of a revolution. Um, and obviously there's going to be uh, 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 the jobs are going to gravitate towards some some aspects of AI, but ultimately the human evolution is going to happen with productivity gains rather than anything else. 
So humans will always find jobs to do, but the productivity gains that we get out of AI is going to be so immense that like, you know, rather than resisting, embrace it and make sure that it's part of your your offering in terms of like, you know, uh, I, I think that's that's eventually going to happen anyway. So it's kind of like, you know, we need to be able to have the learning mindset to be able to get that part of your curriculum. So I would say that don't resist, rather uh, take it in stride. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Gopi, for joining in. It was a great conversation and, uh, you know, all the very best to Couchbase and all your fun activities. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>